Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. We've got a couple of motherboards here that might look a little bit familiar on first glance. This is ASUS's tough lineup, the Griffin and the Sabertooth, but now featuring the latest Intel Z97 chipset. See, like Griffin, like with wings, and Sabertooth, like with fangs. How long are you gonna let me do this for? So before we get into the motherboards, what exactly is Z97? Well, it really is an update to the Z87 chipset. It still uses the same LGA 1150 socket, which is great news for people with current Haswell CPUs. Nothing changes for you. The Z97 chipset still uses DDR3 and is fully backwards compatible with any existing processors. That means for your 4770K, 4670K, or whatever other fourth gen Intel Core i3, i5, or i7 processor, it'll all just work right out of the box. I mean, here, I've got an existing Haswell processor, and as you can see, it fits right in without a problem. As for new processors, you'll have to wait for a couple of weeks if, for the official announcement, but we've heard that a full Haswell refresh is on its way with both locked and unlocked processors codenamed Devil's Canyon. Looking further into the future, Intel says Broadwell is going to be on the Z97 chipset and LGA1150, so these boards are going to be around for quite a while. Alright, so essentially, it's a chipset that runs the same hardware as Z87, so what's new? Really, the big deal here is SATA Express and M.2 storage capability. Each of these standards utilizes two PCI Express 2.0 lanes, and in the case of SATA Express, you are now getting upwards of 10 gigabit per second of bandwidth compared to 6 gigabits per second of bandwidth that you had before on SATA Gen 3. There have been some preliminary benchmarks on engineering sample hardware that has shown anywhere from a 33 to 55% read and write improvement simply by switching a drive from SATA 6 gig to SATA Express. As of right now, eh, there aren't any SATA Express drives available, but you should see them nearer to the end of this year. All right, so finally, what's left is to show you these two motherboards. They're actually available for pre-order right now, along with ASUS's entire motherboard lineup, so check out the links in the video description. But these are both from the TUF lineup, which stands for the ultimate force. They use a military color scheme, an aesthetic that goes beyond looks, as they're actually military standard grade hardware, according to ASUS, and they are subjected to server grade testing, which includes testing under extreme temperatures and humidity. Testing temperatures range from minus 10 to 60 degrees Celsius and humidity all the way up to 90%. So first of all, whoop, I got the wrong one. We've got the Sabertooth Z97. There are actually two versions of this board, the Mark 1, which we have here, and the Mark 2. The main difference is that the Mark 2 doesn't come with the tough armored exterior and it also lacks SATA Express. So if you want the full Sabertooth experience, you'll want to pick up this bad boy, the Mark 1 Sabertooth Z97. So what is this tough armor anyway? Well, at its most basic level, it's a cover for your board that gives it a pretty slick look. If you look here in the back, there's a shroud around the VRM modules, and then there's actually a spot for a fan. So normally there'd be a fan there, but this is a pre-production model, so we, we actually don't have the fan, but it has a... <clears throat> Dust D fan. So I don't know if they're going for like a play on dusty fan or like dust D fan, like D dust, like the map, or I don't know. Anyway, the feature would normally bring in, allows, allows the fan to normally bring in fresh air to cool the VRM from the back, from behind the case, but occasionally the motherboard firmware will actually reverse that fan to help dislodge and expel dust that might get trapped in the armor. On the back is ASUS's tough fortifier plate. It makes the whole motherboard extremely rigid, which helps when you have heavy graphics cards or CPU heat sinks that are also heavy or mounted with high pressure and all that good stuff. And another new feature of this version is their Thermal Radar 2, which uses multiple sensors located at various points on the board to monitor temperatures and automatically adjust fans. This time, instead of just DC fans, the motherboard can also ramp speeds for PWM fans. The Z97 Sabertooth also gains a new, even easier to use, easy mode in their UEFI for noobs and a tough noise guard design, which not only puts the audio components on a separate, sort of quarantined part of the board, but they've actually even separated the hardware for the left and right channels as much as possible 
possible to reduce interference between the audio channels. Other than that, it's a fairly standard iteration on the Z87 Sabertooth. Little improvements here. There are the usual 10K TI caps, 8 plus 2 digital phase power design, 5-year warranty. 5-year warranty is pretty cool. And the dust defenders, which cap off all the unused PCI Express lanes and unused I.O. ports and provide protection from the elements. As for internal I.O., there's the new single SATA Express connector, the new dual USB 3, and there's all the usual stuff that you're going to find. So you got your USB 2 ports, your SATA 3 ports, you've got two, uh, three PCI Express 16X slots, although I'm going to probably recommend sticking with these two if you're going to be running dual graphics cards because these two are going to be coming directly off the CPU. And that bottom one comes off the chipset. You've also got three PCIe 1X slots. You've got the usual 24-pin and 8-pin connectors in their ideal locations. And of course, that socket that we mentioned before. On the back of the board, you've got four USB 2.0 ports, a BIOS flashback or slash BIOS clear button. That's actually for BIOS flashback, so there you go. You've got DisplayPort, HDMI, dual gigabit LAN, four USB 3.0 ports, and 7.1 audio out. And next up is the Griffin. Unlike the Sabretooth, which had slightly differing Mark 1 and Mark 2 designs, the Griffin simply comes either as an armor edition, where the thermal armor is pre-installed, or like this one where you can just get the board and then you can buy the armor separately if you really want to. The Griffin takes all the design philosophies and features of the Sabretooth and shrinks it down to an MATX form factor. So here you're getting no SATA Express, but aside from a few less ports, you're getting a fairly similar product. So let's do the internal I.O. You've got your usual couple of USB 2 ports. You got your, you know, internal front panel audio. You got your six SATA three six gigabit per second ports. You've got front USB three. Just one of those on this one though. A 24 pin connector, an 8 pin connector in their ideal locations. Just like on the other board, we've got four memory slots, each supporting dual channel DDR3 memory. So that's up to 32 gigs with current memory modules. Although you know, who knows what happens in the future? You know, that kind of thing. And then on the back, we've got four. USB 2.0 ports, four USB 3.0 ports, DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort out, single LAN on this one, and 7.1 audio out. We do see that same separated PCB section for the audio as well on this one, and that's a really nice thing to see on more boards, and not just on the ROG series boards as well. So that's pretty much it. These tough series boards really have a love it or hate it aesthetic that, you know, really takes that military spec theme head on. Asus has delivered compelling successors to the Z87 Sabretooth and Griffin boards that aim to please the enthusiast and the most, you know, dust phobic of gamers. And at the end of the day, these boards are, they are what they are. They're an upgrade from Z87, really only if you want those extra features like SATA Express, or if you want future compatibility with upcoming processors there you go. Other than that, there's not going to be a compelling reason to upgrade your existing Sabertooth Z87. So let us know, are you going to upgrade to Z97? And if so, what platform are you upgrading from? And if not, let us know that you're not going to and tell us what platform you're still running and why. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Thank you for watching this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.